Right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. All right, thanks a lot, Royce, and thank you for tuning in to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Rich Walsh will be joined by the Pony Express, Andrew Filipponi, in just a matter of moments. So we'll be talking about Steelers' bye weeks, problem with the Penguins, all kind of stuff to talk about. Chase Claypool not really calling out the Steelers, which was a surprise for me. Um, also, Pony is at home for tonight's show. I love and, the background. And a nice new haircut for you, Richie. Thanks. I know you like to give your barber some love, I can tell. Continental you just had your ears club. lowered. I need to take yep. you there. We should do like a little what? Maybe a video podcast for my barber. I mean, that sounds like that would be something good, right? Well, LeBron James uh, started an HBO show like that. I think it's called The Shop, where they sit around and they get their hair cut and they drink wine and they talk about stuff. We should do that. You, me, Pop. Well, Malsey doesn't get his hair cut because he's bald. But, you know, we could get some people together. I think that would be a lot of fun. I'd be down. Yeah, we definitely should do that. Look, we thought of a new show here. That's that's a great idea. All right, so, Paul. Well, you've got a lot of award-winning shows like Fan Nation, which does big ratings and has won awards. So if you have an idea, Richie, it's probably a good one because Fan Nation has swept Steelers Nation. It is a big deal. Yeah, Fan Nation is a huge deal. Remember Living Room Sports? Pomp and I won all kind of awards for that show. Oh, yeah, that's right. That was big. Yeah, Terry um, Bradshaw in Living Room Sports, drinking had, his bourbon. That was a lot of fun. We had Terry Bradshaw. So I think maybe this barbershop, we got something going there, me, you, and Pomp for sure. And then we add a, a, you know, a, a rotating fourth guy, fourth person there. Um, now, does your, your does your barber do dye jobs for Pomp? He said he talked about it. Yeah, he was. We were actually talking about it today because I had a couple gray hair. But I, I think if I go gray, I'm just gonna let it go, right? Oh, I'm, I'm not. I'm so vain. As soon as I see some grays, I'm getting the dye job. Are you really? Yep. Yeah. I, I mean, I think he can handle it. Justin's amazing. Uh, Continental combs out in Plum. Love it. Go there all the time. Couple once every two weeks. So I'm gonna definitely bring you there one time. All right. Once every two weeks. Well, I pushed it. <laughs> yeah. I, Whoa. I gotta go. I, I that let it grow. Shattering. I've been down to once every three weeks because we went to I went to Miami for a week and now listen know, to you now bragging. Yeah, I just okay, congratulations just on all your in. success. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Pony. Uh, bye week. Can it turn anything around for the Steelers? I don't think so. I, I mean, I just don't get that feeling being around the team that this is a team that's going to win more than five games. I mean, there is some optimism I hear bye week. They're going to turn it around. They got an easier schedule. I think potentially, Pony, this might be the worst team in the NFL right now. Well, the Texans are giving the Eagles a game. Last I checked when we came on the air, it was an 11-point game. It was competitive. Uh, the worst team in the AFC by record, the Houston Texans, a team that was rebuilding with uh, Davis Mills at quarterback, they were more competitive with Philly. Now, it's a short week for Philly, not a lot of rest. They had a bye week to get ready for the Steelers, so it's not an apples to apples thing. Uh, they have their offense is the worst. Matt Canada is still the coordinator. I don't understand that. I think Mike Mike Tomlin should have fired Matt Canada, replaced him with Mike Sullivan, and gone from there. I don't think the players believe in in Matt Canada. I think that they've checked out on Matt Canada, uh, but I think they will rally in the second half, not to make the playoffs. No. But I think T.J. Watt will help them when he comes back against the Saints. I also think Kenny Pickett will do better. Kenny Pickett got thrown in there against the Bills, the Bucks, the Dolphins, and the Eagles. Those four teams have a combined record of 21-9. and nine. And I think when he comes back from the bye, they'll, they have to go to George Pickens more because of the Claypool trade. And I think that will make their offense a little bit better. Not a lot but enough where I think they'll probably finish, Richie, if I had to guess, 7-10. and 10. Which I don't think is good. I actually want no, them I not. want them to be bad so they get they pick in the top of every round. Um, that's what you need to turn things around with franchises and teams, and unfortunately the Pirates really couldn't do that. But if you get a top pick, you need to take advantage, and you need to get that to move your team in the right direction. And you need to root against the Bears every week, too. They play the Dolphins on Sunday. That's the game I'm – most interested in now, go Dolphins. So that Bears second round pick becomes a better pick. That's a subplot to the season. I'm going to be watching that. I asked a Twitter question today that went viral. 
Richie. I'm not patting myself on the back. Okay. People were very interested in it. Love to hear it. Would you rather the Steelers win the AFC North at 9-8 and eight or finish with a top five pick? For me, I'd rather finish right now knowing that this team's not going to do anything in the playoffs and they somehow turn it on. I, I don't know what they could do to make me feel good about them being in the playoffs. I'd rather see them with the top five pick. So my answer is win the division because they already have their quarterback. If they were a team that was going to go into the draft, and I know you're not one of these guys, Richie, who says, look at Will Levis and Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud, are you? No. You're not one of these no, guys. No, I'm not okay, one good. of those. I mean, because you at least have to give Pickett pick a chance. I mean, you need help everywhere. Offensive line, defensive line, cornerback. Um, that, that's what I, I think that that's where I would target. Uh, and you'll get, a, you'll get a, a, a good player if you're picking in the top five at one of those positions. But, but I think even if they get a top five pick, I would be shocked if they picked in the top five. I think they trade out of that spot. I think they move down. I think they try to get extra picks, whether that was a first round pick the following year, uh, maybe an extra second round pick. I think the Steelers, that's going to be their strategy. Andy Weidel helped build the Eagles into the undefeated team that they are today. A lot of it had to do with really smart trades and really good drafting. And so I do have more faith in the Steelers front office after what they did with the Claypool trade and seeing what the Eagles have done with a lot of the players, Richie, that Andy Weidel drafted. Yeah, you look at last year for an example. I think that they could have gotten Pickett a few picks later and moved back. Um, I, I know, didn't uh, who, who did that? The Patriots did that. They could have done mm -hmm. that potentially. Um, you know, and, and made moves like that, but that's not Kevin Colbert's style, which I kind of like, Weidel, Khan. Maybe they're going to change things up because that's the direction of the NFL now. You, you've never seen a day like yesterday with all the trades, so maybe they're moving in, the, in a direction of we're going to see something different here with the Steelers. At least we can hope. Yeah, I mean, they need to be more modern and progressive. I don't think that means that you do, you know, crazy stuff. And, and do wild things, but they got to be more open-minded. I'm disappointed they have not fired Kennedy yet. I think Mike Tomlin needs to be almost forced to get rid of the guy if the results stay the same. He can't be loyal. He can't say, this is my guy, no matter what. If the results stay where they are, dead last, whether Tomlin wants them or not, the front office and the owner of the team, in my opinion, have to step in. Dan Rooney stepped in with Joe Walton a long time ago with Chuck Knoll. He questioned Chuck Knoll, a guy with four Super Bowl titles, and I think his son is going to have to do the same thing with Mike Tomlin if these things keep up with Matt Canada, which I believe they will. All right, we have to take a break. We're going to take some phone calls on the Borders and Borders hotline coming up next, so stay right there.